See, in, in Scripture, there are two words for time. One is chronos, which means chronological time, as time passes, as time goes on. Then there's another word in the Greek. It's called kairos, which is God's appointed time. And that's the word that Paul uses here in God's timing. In due time, at the right time, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, Peter says, and in due time, at the right time, God will exalt you. That's what Paul is talking about here. It's not to just hang in there, brother, hang in there, hang in there, and something eventually good will happen. But he's saying in due time, in God's time, you will see the fruit. So that's why I say the harvest is controlled. Our responsibility, as Paul said to the church at Corinth, I planted, Apollos watered, but God calls the increase. I have planted, Apollos has watered, but God causes the increase. God has ordained the harvest and you cannot rush his timetable. There's a time to sow and there's a time to reap and God does everything in his season, not ours. Not ours. Now most of us think that due time is right now. We want to see immediate results. But can I share a word with Open Door Baptist Church this morning? Do not lose heart in doing good. For in due time, we will reap if we do not grow weary. I sense some of us are discouraged. I mean, you know, I, I'm hurting. Many of you are hurting. But we can't give up. In God's timing, God has a purpose for this church. I mean, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This church has been slapped and kicked and hurt and knocked around, but we're still here. We're still here. In due time, we will reap if we do not faint. If we do not faint. Now this third point, you know, I try to alliterate stuff, so this sounds kind of contradict, like a contradiction, but the, the, the third point is the harvest is conditional. Okay? So I thought it was certain. Well, it is. If we, re, if we plant seed, if we continue to sow, if we continue to water, if we continue, we will reap. But Paul gives us a warning here, and that's why I say it's conditional. Two things can make the harvest conditional. First of all is we cannot lose heart. We cannot lose heart. See, most of us lose heart by delay. We get tired of waiting. We become discouraged. The great example is Mary and Martha when they sent word to Jesus that, you remember, Jesus, the one you love is sick. <laughs> I love that. It's kind of like, you know, isn't it just like a woman or women together? You know, they're, boy, they're going to get that. Edge. Jesus, the one you love. Jesus knew he loved Lazarus. But the one you love, what does that mean? Get over here. Right now, come quick. The one you love is sick. And Jesus waited four days. He delayed. And by the time Jesus got there, they had lost heart. Lord, if you'd have been here. Lord, if you'd have... You know, Mary said the same thing Martha said. You know why they said the same thing? Because they'd been talking. They were both discouraged. Because Jesus wasn't there. They'd been talking. And bitterness and discouragement, they, they kind of spread when people start talking. That's what Mary and Martha got together. They, were, they had lost heart. They were, they were discouraged because Jesus had delayed. It didn't happen on their timetable. If you had been here, if you had come when we called, but Jesus delayed for a purpose. And church, this is where our faith comes in. We cannot lose heart. We cannot lose heart in doing good. It's not going to happen on our timetable. It's going to happen on God's timetable. And again, I know I'm speaking to the church, but for many of you, this is a personal application as well. 
There's someone that you've been praying for. There's someone you've been ministering to. There's someone you've been hoping, you know, trying to make a difference in their life for the cause of Christ, and you haven't seen any results. And the tendency is to lose heart. To lose heart. But in due time, we will reap. Our, our harvest conditional, not only because we can lose heart, but we, we cannot grow, uh, excuse me, we cannot lose heart. We cannot grow weary. Quickly, we will miss the harvest if we grow weary. If we faint not, the word faint there, I like to, if we grow weary, is to, to, to let go. The picture here, the word picture is of an archer who has pulled his bow and he's ready to fire at the target. I used to bow hunt. My children didn't like that, Katie especially. She, she'd say, you killed deer? And I'd say, yeah, I killed the mean ones. And she said, how do you know they're mean, daddy? I said, well, their tongue's sticking out. So anyway, I would pull my bow back many times and that many times that deer would step behind a tree and you just kind of wait and wait and wait. And then you, after a while you get so weird, you just have to let go. And that's exactly the word Paul used to loose, to let go, to lose your edge, to let your guard down, to just relax. That's what it means to grow weary. If we faint not, we can faint because the work is difficult. We grow weary because it's hard work, planting seeds of righteousness, doing good, being faithful in prayer, sharing the gospel. None of this is easy. It's easy just to let go. Good people quit doing, quit doing good quicker than bad people quit doing bad. Church, I, we need to rally. I want to encourage you. We need to step it up. As I said last Sunday, this is a crucial time in the life of Open Door Baptist Church. And I, you know, I just smile sometimes when I see God. You know, I didn't pick this passage. This is where we are. Why? Because God says to Open Door Baptist Church, don't lose heart. Don't grow weary. As a matter of fact, we need to step it up. We need to step it up. I know we're grieving, but we do not grieve as those who have no hope. But again, remember, as I said at the outset, we cannot do this on our own. I'm not talking about let's pull ourselves up by the bootstrap and really buckle down. Apart from Christ, we can do nothing. We can do nothing. But I want to encourage you, the work that God has laid on you, on your heart, whether it's picking up cans teaching Sunday school, being an encourager. We got some tremendous people in this church with the gift of encouragement. Whatever God has equipped you to do, singing, teaching, do it for the glory of God. Don't lose heart. Don't grow weary. We're in this for the long haul. Amen? Father, thank you for your word to us this morning. God, it is timely. The Lord is powerful. Lord, I pray for, uh, Lord, I just continue to lift up the Jones family to you. And I know that Father, uh, Mr. Lawrence was a pillar, not only in this church, but in that family. And Lord, I pray that you'd continue to, to use this family in your kingdom in such a powerful way. So many are doing so much good for your glory, for the, for, for the good of the kingdom. Lord, I pray that they would not lose heart, that they would not grow weary but you would encourage them and refresh them. Lord, I pray for our people here at Open Door, God, that we would not grow weary, that we would not lose heart. Father, we have a tremendous example in the flesh of Mr. Lawrence Jones, but Lord, we have the power of the Holy Spirit in our life to empower us, to enable us, to sustain us for the long haul. May we not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not faint. Thank you, Lord, for your strength. And Lord, again, we cannot even attempt this in and of ourselves. But Lord, we thank you that Christ lives in us. Of course, in his name we pray. Amen. This morning, as I said at the outset, you cannot attempt to live the Christian life apart from God's grace. Paul told Titus, the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men. It's by God's grace, not by your good works, not by your efforts that you can know Christ. 
If you don't know Christ this morning, I encourage you to come and give your heart to the Lord. Maybe this morning you're here and you're tired, you're discouraged. You need somebody just to surround you and love on you and pray with you. Our people would love to do that. You just come to the altar. Let's stand together as Paula plays this morning. You know, when you come to God's people, you come to the Lord. You come to the church, you come to Christ. Paul told, asked Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? And Paul had been persecuting the church. Come to Christ, come to this church, come and say, you know, I need help, I'm tired. I've lost heart, I've grown weary. Come, be encouraged. Cast your cares upon the Lord because He cares for you. This morning, Jesus is saying, you come and I'll meet your need. You come, you come. As Paul. Thank you.